Good day, grade 10s. In the last module, we learned about chemical change. Now we need to learn about balancing chemical equations. So there are a couple of steps that you need to follow to balance an equation. Step one, you need to identify and write down the reactants in words. The reactants are always written on the left-hand side of the equation. Step two, you draw an arrow to indicate that there is a reaction and to separate the reactants from the products. Step three, we identify and write down the products in words and these are now written on the right hand side of the arrow. And now you write down the symbols and formula for each reactant and product and then you balance the equation. Now all this might seem a little bit complicated but we've got a lovely little video which shows you how to do it step by step. When scientists established that everything was made of atoms, we call this the atomic theory, the law of conservation of mass came to be stated as, atoms are neither created nor destroyed during any chemical reaction. What this means for us is, when you're writing out a chemical reaction, a chemical equation, you'd better make sure it has the same number of atoms on the left side of the equation as on the right side. You can't go creating atoms or destroying atoms. Make sure there's the same number of oxygen atoms on the left as on the right. The same number of hydrogen atoms on the left and the right, okay? Otherwise, you're breaking the laws of the universe. We're going to go through five examples of writing balanced chemical equations. There are a couple of popular methods for balancing chemical equations. In this video, I'll show you the most commonly used method. We call this the inspection method or you might call it the trial and error method. Some people prefer to use another method which uses algebra. I'm putting that method in another video. If you really like algebra, that's a great method, so check out that video and see which method works best for you. Here's our first example. We know that hydrogen and oxygen combine to form water. We know that hydrogen exists as a molecule of two hydrogen atoms covalently bonded together, H2, and oxygen likewise exists as a molecule of two oxygen atoms covalently bonded together, O2, so we have H2 plus O2 forming H2O. But if we write the chemical equation like this, we've violated the law of conservation of mass. We can't show atoms being created or destroyed during the course of this reaction, but that's what we just wrote it looks like we lost an atom of oxygen. So we need to balance this chemical equation by including coefficients in front of the reactants or products. Here's the big rule we have to follow. We are only allowed to change the coefficients in front of any single atom or molecule, but we can't change any subscripts. If we did, we'd be changing the actual chemical. For instance, if we wrote H2O2 on the right-hand side, we might feel clever and think we solved the problem, but we'd be so completely wrong, because that's not the formula for water, that's the formula for hydrogen peroxide. What we can do, however, is write 2H2O, which means two molecules of water, or 3H2O, and so on. Similarly, on the left, if we wrote O3, that's the formula for ozone instead of the formula for molecular oxygen, so we're not allowed to do that. Changing the coefficient is okay because that just changes the amount. 1O2 versus 2O2, that just means one molecule of oxygen versus two molecules of oxygen. So let's look at our unbalanced equation. H2 plus O2 yields H2O, that's unbalanced. If we count up the number of atoms on each side, we can see they're not correct. We have two hydrogens on each side, but we have two oxygens on the left and only one on the right. What happens if we put a two in front of the H2O, so we'd have two oxygens on the right? H2 plus O2 yields two H2O, and it's still unbalanced. Now we have two hydrogens on the left and two oxygens on the left, but four hydrogens on the right and two oxygens on the right. If we put a coefficient of two in front of the hydrogen molecule on the left, however, 
we get 2H2 plus O2 yields 2H2O. Now everything is balanced. Four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms on the left, four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms on the right. Let's try another one. Nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas react to form ammonia. We write that as N2 plus H2 yields NH3. That's unbalanced. We can see that if we count up the atoms on both sides. On the left, there's 2N and 2H, and on the right, there's 1N and 3H. Okay, I see I have 3H on the right and 2H on the left. The lowest common multiple is 6, so I'm going to try to get 6H on both sides. To do that, I need to multiply the H2 by 3 on the left and the NH3 by 2 on the right. N2 plus 3H2 yields 2NH3. Okay, let's check. On the left, we have 2N and 6H, and on the right, we have 2N and 6H. That's balanced. Let's try another one with ammonia reacting with oxygen. NH3 plus O2 yields NO plus H2O. That almost looks balanced, doesn't it? But it isn't. Remember to always count up the atoms on both sides. On the left, we have 1N, 3H, and 2O. On the right, we have 1N, 2H, and 2O. Okay, there are 3H on one side and 2H on the other. Let's give them coefficients like we did last time to get a total of 6H and see if that helps. That gives us 2NH3 plus O2 yields 2NO plus 3H2O. So on the left, we have 2N, 6H, 2O, and on the right, we have 2N, 6H, and 5O. Okay, we balance the H's, but now O is wonky. Don't give up. Keep adding coefficients. We have 2O on the left and 5 on the right. The lowest common multiple is 10, so let's try for 10 total oxygen by putting a coefficient of 5 on the left. We'll have to multiply the right by 2 to get up to 10 oxygen on that side. So 2NH3 plus 5O2 yields 4NO plus 6H2O. So on the left we have 2N, 6H, and 10O. On the right we have 4N, 12H, and 10O. Okay, if we multiply that NH3 by 2 on the left, we'll be square. So we put a coefficient of 2 onto NH3. Let's check. 4NH3 plus 5O2 yields 4NO plus 6H2O. On the left, we have 4N, 12H, and 10O. On the right, we have 4N, 12H, and 10O. That's balanced. That one was hard, but we got it. Just don't give up. How about how carbon and oxygen form carbon dioxide? Remember, carbon exists as a single atom, but oxygen is a diatomic molecule. So C plus O2 yields CO2. Count up the number of atoms on both sides. On the left, we have 1C and 2O. On the right, we have 1C and 2O. It's already balanced. Sometimes you get a little gift. What if you saw something like this? 4C plus 4O2 yields 4CO2. There are the same number of each kind of atom on both sides, but by convention, we always simplify down to the smallest whole number. So we simplify this by dividing through by 4 to get 1C plus 1O2 yields 1CO2. And since we don't write the ones in front of an atom or molecule, they're understood, we just write C plus O2 yields CO2. Another thing to remember is that chemists generally don't write coefficients as fractions. Every now and then you'll see that, but it's somewhat frowned upon. So stick to the smallest whole number. I'm going to give you another real example number four because that one was already balanced. It doesn't really count. How about the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide? You know, like when you put hydrogen peroxide on a cut and it's bubbling? 
This is what's happening. Hydrogen peroxide breaks down into water and oxygen gas. H2O2 yields H2O plus O2. Count out the number of atoms on both sides. On the left, we have 2H and 2O. On the right, we have 2H and 3O. There is an even number of oxygens on the left-hand side and an odd number of oxygens on the right-hand side. See that one oxygen sitting on its own on the right? If I multiply that by 2, now there will be an even number of oxygens on the right-hand side as well. Let's try that. H2O2 yields 2H2O plus O2. So now on the left we have 2H and 2O, and on the right we have 4H and 4O. So now there is twice as much hydrogen and oxygen on the right as on the left. If we put a coefficient of 2 on the left, we should even everything out. 2H2O2 yields 2H2O plus O2. On the left, there's 4H and 4O, and on the right, there's 4H and 4O. Balanced. Let's do our last example. Let's pick a big, important reaction, the combustion of glucose. This is an essential reaction for getting energy from food. You can think of it like this. You eat glucose, and you breathe in oxygen, and you breathe out carbon dioxide and water vapor. You are a combustion engine. You'll learn more about it when you study biochemistry. For now, let's balance this equation. C6H12O6, that's glucose, plus O2 yields CO2 plus H2O. Okay, on the left, we have 6C12H and 8O, and on the right, there's 1C, 2H, and 3O. Okay, that's unbalanced. So, start by putting a coefficient of 6 in front of the CO2 to balance the number of carbons and recount. C6H12O6 plus O2 yields 6CO2 plus H2O. On the left, we have still 6C12H and 8O. On the right, we have 6 c 2H and 13O. Let's put a 6 in front of the H2O to balance the number of hydrogens and recount. C6H12O6 plus O2 yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O. So on the left we still have 6C12H and 8O. On the right we have 6C12H and 18O. Let's put a 6 in front of the O2 and recount. C6H12O6 plus 6O2 yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O. So on the left, there's 6C12H and 18O. On the right, there's 6C12H and 18O. Balanced. Right, grade 10. So you can see that even though some of them are very, very tricky and can take a while, that it can actually be done in baby steps. So it, also what you need to know is that on equations you get some other information. So what you could get is a little prefix. And if the prefix is an S, then it is a solid. If the prefix is an L, then it's a liquid. If the prefix is a G, then it's a gas. And if it's AQ, it means aqueous. And what that means is that it's in solution. It is not a pure liquid. So for example, if we gave this, 4FES plus 3O2G gives you 2FETO3S, what are we saying? We are saying that 4 atoms of iron in the solid phase plus 3 oxygen molecules in the gas phase react to form iron oxide two molecules of them and it's also in the solid phase. Now we've got given a lot of information, most importantly how to balance chemical equations. Grade 10, so this requires practice, practice, practice. Please go make sure you do lots of practice examples and then go do the assessments at the end of the section to make sure that you can do this properly. Thank you, have a wonderful day.